Hello viewers, Super GT here. Welcome to one of the filthiest races I've been part of in quite a long time, and that is saying something. Not only was everyone extremely filthy, or not everyone, but a few culprits, but of course we had the misgivings of the current penalty system, which dished out the law incorrectly. Now, free turn one, we've already kicked off in typical fashion with a nice little ram there up ahead. Now we're going to follow two perspectives for this first run through. So of course Ram Shadow in 8th place there and Scalebreaker96, the lad behind. So from two perspectives I think this should be quite an interesting tale to tell. Now this was a race that featured in a live stream. I did this, I did this live. I saved the replay luckily and I felt like it was so crazy that it really was worth bringing uh, a full video on it. Normally, normally stuff I do on live streams just stays on the live streams, but this I felt like this was worthy of a video and hopefully an Oscar because it was really that good. There were so many characters, the character development was unreal in this one. It would probably go down in film history, I would have thought. Okay, so in um, fifth and sixth place here, myself and Scalebreaker. Uh, these are the two guys we're going to be watching, but of course, there's so many perspectives, there's so many stories to tell, and you could probably follow everyone in this race, and they'd each have an interesting way of navigating this entire race. So you'll see people go from the front to the back to the front to the back, people getting penalties where they shouldn't get penalties, it really just all kicks off. So I get a two second penalty there, and to be fair, I mean, it was justified because I, I did nudge that guy wide, I didn't expect him to break, that's why, but... I still did nudge him. Uh, we get hit there from behind. Continue uh, in sixth place, of course. Actually, go back, in, uh, go back, uh, go back into fifth. As Scalebreak goes up into fourth, so we started on the back row. We've gone from 11th and 12th to fourth and fifth, uh, which is really quite a good return after the first lap. But these races, okay. So we had that VW Golf at uh, Nurburgring not too long ago, and that was. It was a very fun race, but at the same time, it was very dirty. At least some of the races I had. And some of them were actually pretty clean. But um, it, I suppose it just depends which lobby you're in and who, who's in the race with you and where you start on the grid, etc. Now, the problem with this race, of course, is, well, it's Tokyo. Tokyo is just penalty city, basically. You've got the walls on every corner. And I just chop across scale break a little bit too, uh, it's too late there. Wanting to get the... Uh, better line into the corner, couldn't quite judge where my the back of my car was or the front of his one was. So I go wide on the exit, go three abreast here with Matthias Bauer, who was actually originally the pole sitter. He's coming back through. He went uh, from, he started first and he went down to about eighth or something and then now he's coming back through. So about four abreast here almost into the Docklands area. Scalebreaker outbreaks himself and um, the Dutchman here gets a five second penalty out of nowhere, honestly, for like absolutely nothing. He didn't actually do anything at all. If anything, I hit him in the back. And uh, I, I've got a two and a half second penalty. I'm going to serve that right now. Uh, the Dutchman's going to serve that a lap later, having only just got the penalty. And then I, quite stupidly, come out of the ghost right on the racing line and get a nice big boost from behind. Okay, so settling in ninth place. Coming through the tunnel, now these uh, slower cars t tend to bring out some very interesting races as we said with the VW Golf at Nürburgring. Because of the slipstream, because of the slow nature of the car, you can get uh, a lot of close racing. But at the same time it's also very aggressive when you get so many people so close. Of course with the slipstream being so powerful in this game, that does tend to accentuate that quite a bit. Coming to the hairpin, we've got another big uh, takeout here. Matthias Bauer wiping out the Portuguese driver. So we're all going to go up two positions here. Now, on lap two, then, and end of lap two, Scalebreaker in fourth, as he was a lap ago. I'm in seventh, so I've really gone up and down in this one. Of course, having that penalty to serve. So this one really was a sportsmanship rating killer. So if you want to keep your SR at 99 or just keep it at all don't bother with these kind of races Tokyo Tokyo is just an absolute killer especially if you just hit the wall and you'll see an amazing example of that later on in fact on lap 3 is coming up 
So going out of the final corner. I don't really get a good exit out of there, actually. As we come up to the line to finish lap two. Now take a look at the order here. We've got the uh, British player, empty player, uh, now into the lead. Actually, they're swapping constantly. Him and the uh, Hungarian driver swapping for the lead. Now, this lap here is where, where things really kick off. So, so far, it's been pretty mental. I mean, I've been going up up and down the order as um, as the race has progressed, as have pretty much everyone, to be honest. Uh, in third place, we've got the Dutchman with the five-second penalty. You can see him just up ahead there. Now, he's going to serve that five seconds. So, he's going to drop down. As this guy gets lunged out of nowhere by the Spaniard coming into the Docklands, he's going to be able to retake that mo uh, position with a move back, yes he is. Now back into a fourth for him, which is going to turn into third when the Dutchman serves his penalty here. This is the lines coming up. So the British guy goes, uh, scale breaker goes up in third. I'm just able to go around the outside through this right handle to the back straight. We just get pinched into the wall and uh, lose uh, some crucial momentum. Uh, the Dutchman getting a one second penalty for that, quite interestingly. Now coming down here, this is where things really kick off, because you see the top two, they're quite a long way ahead. They should really finish first and second here. It should be game over, essentially. But, the British player, in uh, first place, or it was second, just decides he's going to ram off the Hungarian guy for no reason. And then the, the rest of the pack comes swarming through into the hairpin. This is a really big choke point, as it's a really big braking zone. Scale breaker gets rammed into the wall. Five second penalty. The stewards are most certainly drunk. So he gets... He gets a penalty for getting hit into the wall. And then just to rub it in a little bit later, the same guy who punted him shoves him into the wall again. No penalty for either incident for the Dutch, for the Dutch guy who A, rammed him into the wall and B, pinched him into the wall again straight away. Uh, so no justice really being served out here uh, correctly. The Gran Turismo justice system really does need to be reworked. Now coming through the uh, final couple of corners, Dutchman... He's just going to do it again. He's just going to pinch this guy into the wall. Scale break is really on the receiving end here from this Dutch guy. Now coming through the final corner, it's all really kicking off here. And I just get the run on Olympic who goes into the back of the guy ahead. And as we come up to the line, I'm going to finish in second because the two ahead of me have penalties. And I just uh, get ahead of them by virtue of just being close enough. So I went from fifth to second on that final corner as people had penalties. And then Scale Breaker went from about fourth and eventually finishes 11th just have a look at that again coming through the final corner spanning up the inside of the british player and then he hits the outside wall loses momentum gets a one second penalty olympic goes into the back of him that loses him momentum so i get ahead of olympic and then the two ahead have got the penalty so i just get ahead of both so it really was an incredible finish it really just kicked off majorly but i wanted to go through this again because i really felt like this this race really had so many stories to tell and we're going to go on board now with Empty Player. We started second and was towards the front for a lot for a lot of this race. And I think you can really learn a lesson from this guy of how not to race, basically. He did some things pretty good, but then he just really did mess up on the final lap. And it just shows you a lesson in just making the right decisions, of which he didn't really do too much of. Now, the Dutch guy here... He got hit for the first corner, and I think that might have triggered something in his brain, because from then on, he was a very different person, and maybe not even a person, an animal, I think he turned into. Now, coming into the first corner, or oh, sorry, first big breaking zone, should I say, this is actually the second corner. So, empty players, you're taking it quite easy. Dutchman, uh, sorry, uh, Spaniard going very deep, way too deep on the brakes, and he's going to send himself to the Shadow Realm. Now, through the first court, through the first long... 270 degree corner in the Docklands so the Dutchman uh, down the order of course by virtue of getting uh, shoved wide a little bit on the first corner so just fighting at the back but this race is never over till it's over as you saw on that previous run through as because of the slipstream and because of people just ramming the crap out of each other and of course the penalty system you just never know what's going to happen you just have to stay in there with a chance right through to the very end and never give up hashtag never give up of course Okay, so empty player loses the position here to the Portuguese driver. So just letting him go. No need to fight it too much. And sometimes I think that's the best thing, especially when you're, when you're towards the front of the pack. There's not much point in really fighting too much. It's better to, to try to work together, if anything, and try to pull away from the group behind. 
As uh, we go into this corner, he actually pulls off a really good move around the outside. Gets the move done and uh, moves back into the lead. Now through the hairpin here, that's uh, myself there, Ramp Shadow getting a penalty. Empty player into the lead, three, three abreast here with the Dutchman. He just pinches these two guys. This was his uh, signature move, I think. His trademark sign-off, just pinching people against the wall. He absolutely loved doing it. He didn't really get any penalties for doing it. So there was three abreast. He didn't really, maybe just didn't see them. But then, if you didn't see them, then you need to increase your awareness. So either way, perhaps should have uh, seen that situation arising and not really turned right into two people who are there. But anyway, we move, we move forward. He didn't get a penalty for that. Moving towards empty player. End of, end of the first lap. He's um, in, in the lead. He started second. Matthias Bauer started on pole. He's down in seventh at the end of this first lap. And uh, empty player with a half second penalty. Not sure what for, but uh, he'll have to serve that in just a few moments' time after the, the Dockland section. Now, through the first corner, lap number two. Uh, the Dutch guy here trying to make a little comeback. There is Ram Shadow just up ahead with a two second penalty to be served. So he got three abreast just up ahead and um, room for more at the back. So he's going to try to just get himself into that little gap there. He is indeed just going to make it happen. Late on the brakes, down the middle. And um, Scalebreaker quite late on the brakes. I hit him in the back actually. So Ram Shadow hitting him and he actually gets a five second penalty. Now if this guy wasn't annoyed from the first corner getting punted wide then he's definitely going to be annoyed about that because honestly I tapped him in the rear and I mean no, nothing really happened he he went a little bit deep but all the positions kind of remained the, have remained the same and he got a five second penalty and obviously completely unjustified and so to be fair I don't I don't really blame him for getting quite annoyed at this but he goes up into fifth with a five second penalty the Dutchman empty player here Similar to the first lap, the Portuguese guy went through and uh, on this lap it's going to be the Hungarian driver instead. So coming through this little uh, left-right section, very fast sweeping corner, just about to take it flat out. A bit of sliding through the corner. Looking for the 200 ball just up ahead, there it is. And you're going to break pretty much just underneath that, or just after. And you want your uh, you want your brake bias to be all the way to the front. There's Matthias Bauer wiping out the Portuguese driver. Innocent victim. I think uh, Matthias Bauer is going to have to be signed up to R4M as that looked quite, well, just a very good R4M trademark move. So I think he's going to have to be a key integral part of R4M going forwards. Meanwhile at the front, empty player in second, holding a nice position here just behind uh, the, uh, the Hungarian driver of uh, Buda Laszlo, who is looking good at this point here. Now of course with the slipstream, you never can quite predict because of course it's very easy to overtake on this track with the slipstream and the the, uh, the massive hairpin at the end of the at the end of the lap. So uh, Laszlo's going to go defensive, forcing empty player to the right hand side, the outside. Now, as I mentioned, this is where he begins to make some rather different decisions and some bad ones. And it's always interesting to actually analyse, you know, the way that people race. You know, you can analyse yourself. I can analyse myself and go back and watch myself and think, why did I do that? And why did I do that? And oh, that was alright, but that wasn't. So there's so many things you can um, pick up on, pick up upon, by watching back replays. Now this is where the filth really gets whacked up to 11. So please do close your eyes, children. As we come into this corner, Hungarian goes a little bit deep. He goes up the inside here, and it's just utterly filthy move. I think he's going to have to take a shower after that one because the dirt is real right now. So the Dutchman catches up. He does have this five second penalty to serve though. And that is gonna drop this guy back off the back. Now luckily for the Hungarian, he's still in the slipstream range. So he can catch up down this back straight, which is coming up just after this corner here. Now this is where myself, I go around the outside there, Ram Shadow. And I just get pinched against the wall. There we go. And uh, this guy's gonna get the one second penalty for that. Now this is where he makes another really bad decision. Okay, so Buda Laszlo in second, Hungarian driver. Going to try to come back past with the slipstream. And it happens. But into a left-hander, he turns right, smacks him into the wall. Full R4M mode engaged. Murder on the dance floor. As we come down to this final corner, everyone swarms upon the top two. They could have easily had a first second there. But no, they just ruined it for each other. Well, uh, the, the British guy ruined it completely. And then 
That guy gets murdered, Scalebreaker gets murdered, gets the five second penalty from the Dutch guy who breaks way too late. Now we've got about six people who could win this race coming up to this final corner. Dutchman just rams him into the wall. And an empty player here with the hazards on, just to let everyone know that there is a hazard or that he is a hazard. Coming through the last couple of corners, Buddha Laszlo with a two second penalty, not sure what that was for, but unfortunately, uh, that's not gonna that's gonna mean he can't win this race the Spaniard out of nowhere has now found himself in the lead this is where the Dutch guy slams him into the wall for the second time and then this guy gets bundled wide now you think that was a bit of karma that the Dutchman actually um, spun out there but he didn't even get a penalty for that in fact scalebreaker got another five second penalty for that it's unbelievable and then um, he finishes in sixth place. And does Vigor, Dutch guy, actually gets ahead of Scalebreaker, who he absolutely abused for those last couple of corners. Now, <laughs> let me know your thoughts on that race. I mean, there's so many things to... I mean, there's so many things I missed. There's so many perspectives that we could have watched, but I think that's enough for perspectives we've seen. It really just kicked off. We're going to go on board with Matthias Bauer, because this race for him was quite interesting. I'll just go through this quite quickly. Now, he started on pole. Made the mistake for turn one, immediately drops back down to sixth place. Tries it around the outside at uh, turn one. Spaniard, who eventually won the race, made a big mistake there, drops down the order. So you just couldn't predict what who was going to win, who was going to do well in this race. I finished second, and I was down in sort of seventh, eighth foot at one point, and I started in eleventh. So it really just kicked off. Matches Bauer getting overtaken by Scalebreaker, passes him back, and then this is where. Murder on the dance floor happens once again, coming down into the uh, hairpin. Now, this was quite filthy, but I will say, you know, you've got to give this guy a shout out here because not many people would do this. Stop. He stopped and waited for the guy he hit off. And to be fair, he probably just made a mistake. It was an innocent enough mistake. You break a little bit too late at the hairpin. Everyone does it. I've done it. And then he waited for him at least. So we're going to end on a, a somewhat high note there bit of sportsmanship but um let me know your thoughts i hope you enjoyed the video as always everyone i shall see you next time have a nice day goodbye